It's finally happened. Apple are bringing Final Cut Pro and Logic Pro to the iPad and they are out on May 23rd. And there's some great news and some so-so news about that depending on how you feel about subscription-based models. Both Final Cut Pro and Logic Pro will bring their new touch interface model integrated with multi-touch giving a responsiveness and intuitiveness that's so precious when editing media and something that I valued highly editing on LumaFusion. More about that clash point between Final Cut Pro and LumaFusion at the end. I'm going to focus more on Final Cut Pro here because that's definitely more my thing. As well as all you'd expect for Final Cut Pro on iPad, like a magnetic timeline, they have some new and interesting features such as live drawing, enabling users to draw and write directly on top of video content using Apple Pencil. On iPad Pro with M2, Apple Pencil Hover unlocks the ability for users to quickly skim and preview footage without ever touching the screen. There will also be multicam video editing available where clips can automatically be synchronized and edited together. And users can even switch angles in a multicam clip with just the touch of a finger. The feature readout also brings scene removal mask where creators can quickly remove or replace the background behind a subject in a clip without using a green screen. Auto crop adjusts footage for vertical, square and other aspect ratios and with voice isolation, background noise like the rain that you can hear behind me can easily be removed from audio captured in the field. There's also the promise of being able to choose from a large library of professional graphics, effects and audio to enhance your storytelling including HDR backgrounds, customizable animated patterns and professional soundtracks that automatically adjust to the length of a video. So here are my thoughts. Apple is clearly going after the Adobe model here with the subscription model. And you'll need at least an M1 iPad to use most of the features in these applications. So far as LumaFusion goes, the fact that the iPad version of Final Cut Pro is only available to M1 iPads and newer will keep LumaFusion going for a while. But for the former poster child for Apple that showcased the iPad's portable video editing capabilities, this likely spells trouble. Sure, they may have lost a few hardcore video editors to DaVinci Resolve's recent iPad offerings, but really only the geeks. Everyday video editors who have older iPads and or don't want to get locked into a subscription model for cost reasons or they just don't like subscriptions, well, that market is safe for now. And I suspect that's most of their users. But for people who want the best experience and want to stay with the Apple ecosystem to take advantage of the integrations between desktop and iPad video editing suites, as well as the best optimized use of the hardware that it runs on, well, I think that that's going to be a growing segment and LumaFusion could get marooned. And to be honest, I'm not sure what they can do about it. Sure, they've just released six track multicam, but to be honest, I find the container clunky to use, especially when using it with other tracks. I'm yet to use Final Cut Pro on iPad, but I'd be keen to get my hands on it to discover what it offers and what the learning curve might look like. And I'm sure I won't be alone. <laughs>